Hey everyone, Angry Honey Badger here. It's time for us to take a look at another build video today. We're going to be playing as Renekton in the top lane. We're going to actually be going up against our rival in the game, um, Nasa. So, what we're going to do today, besides obviously beat people and do a build video, is we're going to talk about runes, we're going to talk about masteries, we're going to talk about items and his abilities. And we're going to cover all those things and just talk a little bit about, a, you know, kind of like a general feel for how to play Renekton. So, um, or at least what I like to do while playing him. We're getting to a lot, a little bit of a fight there as our uh, jungler comes up to gank. And uh, he actually uses his ignite. So I know his ignite is down. So if I get into a little bit of a fight with him, uh, I know we're good to go. What's going to happen is I'm going to hit level 3. And I'm going to go ahead and initiate on him by stunning him. Hit him with some damage and then follow it up. Um, just with a couple of abilities, ignite him, and that is going to kill him, and that will give us first blood. Uh, Renekton does a really good job early in the game of just dealing a lot of damage. Um, you're kind of, uh, kind of like the best early brawler in top lane. Not the, not, maybe not the best, but you're definitely in the top five. But what we're going to do is let's start off with his abilities so we know what we're talking about when we get into those little fights. So let's start off with his passive. His passive is Reign of Anger. What happens there is Renekton gains 5 fury per, er, er, per auto attack. When he's out of combat, he starts to lose it. So right now, you know, well, we're in combat right now, so it'll slowly fill up. When we use an ability, though, we'll be using that, and that will deal um, some extra damage when we are using our abilities. We'll talk about it and how that affects the abilities um, when we're using them. So let's go ahead and dive on into his Q ability, which is Call the Meek. And what that is is you're going to swing your blade, dealing uh, attack or physical damage. It scales from attack damage. And uh, it's also going to heal you for 5% of the damage dealt. So it's pretty good early in the game for uh, just getting some decent health back when you're in the middle of a big minion wave. Um, very helpful for just picking up some health. And what also is going to happen is if you have the 50 Fury or that, you know, when you build it up from that passive, it's going to deal more damage, basically. I, it's the simplest way I can put it. All the numbers are down below. You can read them um, to see exactly how that works. But basically, if you have that filled up to the red bar, it's going to deal more damage. Next, at level 2, this comes down to personal preference. You can put a point into either Slice and Dice, um, which is your E ability, or we'll go ahead and cover his next one, which is Ruthless Predator. We're getting to another little fight. We're going to start out by stunning him, actually, with that Ruthless Predator and doing everything else to him right now. We're just going to make sure we pick that kill up. Um, Flash, make sure he stays in all that damage from the ultimate. We'll get to that in a second. But Ruthless Predator, what happens is your next um, auto attack is going to swing twice. It's going to deal, obviously, that uh, d that physical damage, scales from attack damage. It's going to stun him for point, or the enemy or whatever, for point seven five seconds. If you have that 50 Fury or more, though, it will obviously be dealing a little bit more damage, and I believe the stun is a little bit longer. I believe it's 1.5 seconds. Um, you can read it once again down below. If I'm inaccurate, then... It's down below. You can read it. So that is your um, Ruthless Predator. And what's going to happen is we're going to actually max that out last because the stun duration doesn't change when you put points into it. It's just the damage. So we're going to max out our Q and our E as our first abilities. Um, but that E is our Slice and Dice. And what that does is you're going to dash forward dealing damage to the enemy. Um, if you hit targets, you're going to be able to then dice back again. Um, you have four seconds to use this ability um, from the first time you use it. If you don't hit anything, though, um, any enemy targets of any kind, then you will not be able to use it a second time. So you got to remember to try to hit something if you want to use it twice. Uh, when you do this as well, you also, I believe... Let me check. I'm going to check. Although, we're getting to another little fight. Actually, here's a mistake if that would happen. Let's talk about this. I'm going to go ahead and stun, use my ultimate, because Ramus really doesn't have that much health. It's going to force him to flash, and now it just forces me to solo Nasus. Or Nasus, however you want to say it. Um, I'm going to keep fighting them, because I have way more health, and my ultimate Kha'Zix shows up too. I'm going to pick up a kill on their jungler. They just overcommitted to someone who's doing a lot better than them right now. And, uh, yeah, it didn't, they just didn't team up. If they both, both would have turned around on me at the same time after I initiated on them, it would have been closer for them. I still would have maybe killed them, but it would have been better than me taking one, one at a time because that just that combination doesn't work. You can't do that. So um, you got to remember to do that because if you don't, you're going to have a bad time. Anyways, you, on your dice, though, going back to slice and dice, if you are able to do the dice, what is going to happen there is you're going to shred some of their armor, which is why we're going to be maxing this out second. So it's pretty awesome. Let's do that. It's fun. And then your ultimate, which you're going to put a point in at level six, is your uh, Dominus, I believe. And what happens there is Renekton uh, is going to kind of get the super buff, kind of like uh, Nasus. And you're going to gain health, and then you're going to do damage around you in an area, plus uh, 
I believe 10% ability power, but we don't, we're not worried about that. It does magic damage, but you're going to deal all that damage around you. Um, but you're going to get kind of super buff. It's pretty awesome. And those are your abilities. We're going to max out our Q first, our E second, our W third, and obviously your ultimate levels 6, 11, and 16. And uh, that's what we're going to do. So those are your abilities. Now, early on in this game, let's just can, let's just say this is your normal game where you're going up against a top laner that is dealing physical damage. What I like to do when playing as Renekton is we're going to build the Sunfire Cape. Very helpful. Because it's going to give us health, it's going to give us armor so we can negate, negate damage. And we're going to have that passive burning around us. Helps us clear waves really quick, which is helpful for pushing. And if they're ever, I don't know, next to you or they want to farm... They're going to take damage from the um, Sunfire Cape. So Sunfire Cape is a great item. I know some people, when they play Renekton, like to build a bit more damage on him early. This totally comes down to how the lane works. This is kind of if just you're playing Renekton, and it's just kind of your standard Renekton game. Um, you can always get a Brutalizer early, and if you want that extra damage, the cooldown reduction is good too. It just depends on who your laner is. Um, I can beat Gnosis early without building damage. I can beat him because I'm just ahead of him. My kit enables me to, and he doesn't really get going till I don't know, depends on when he starts really getting his Q fed. So I'm not worried about him at all. He's at half-life. I'm not afraid of diving. I'm going to start with a stun. I'm going to ult him. I'm going to ignite him. He's going to ult to get his buff to get his health, but between the ignite and then my area damage and just all the damage I'm dealing to him, he's not going to be able to live through any of that. So we're really keeping um, him down this game. We really need to because you never want him to get fed. Um, I wouldn't say one mistake he's making, but one mistake he's making with his build is he doesn't have any health of any kind. So he's not really hard to kill because there's not much to him to kill. So we're just going to go ahead and keep doing what I like to do with Renekton is we keep building him really tanky because he's just always a pain to deal with in team fights if he's really beefy. Um, so we're just going to keep going with that. What we've done this last trip back is we've, we have finished our boots, um, and what those we went with this time were Merc, um, treads and those are good because with his uh, weather or wither on him when he slows us it's just nicer to obviously have that tenacity so it isn't as long they also have that amazing taunt by Ramus. they have the huge slow by the um, Karthus on their team also ultimates it's nice to have a little bit more magic resist typically though if you're going up a really attack damage heavy top laner maybe like a Riven you're going to want to definitely pick up the ninja tabby so those are the two boots I'd recommend. You could obviously do cooldown reduction boots if you really wanted to, but I'm not too worried about that right now. We'll get some cooldown reduction in this build. Um, so just not worried about that at all right now. Continuing, though, with pushing top and out farming your opponent. Yeah, why did he build that first? Why would you build gauntlet first? Whatever. Anyways, um, so that's what we're doing with the build so far. That's us tower diving, apparently. I didn't even know that was in there. Anyways, we're going to kill Karthus because we're fed. And we have plenty of magic resist for him because the next item that we are building is going to be the Spirit Visage. And the Spirit Visage is also awesome because that's where we're starting to get some cooldown reduction. It's all going to team up really well. Plus, we get the magic resist. Very helpful. As you can see, that ultimate didn't really do anything to us, although he's only got a rod of ages. Now, as for those runes, we can talk about those a little bit. Runes, what I like to go with is uh, the... What do we get? I think we usually go with the attack damage marks. We go for the armor seals, magic resist, per level glyphs, and then I like um, attack damage quintessences. Movement speed ones aren't terrible also, but those are typically what I'm going to be going with. Um, that last ultimate I took kind of showed me that I'm not taking any damage from them. So at this point, it's like, hey, we can build some more damage, which now we're going to start building towards that Brutalizer. We are going to pick up another kill on Karthus as our team continues to chase, but that's where we'll end that fight. Um, we're just not taking damage. And obviously, when you play the Pool Party Renekton, you have to spam your recall. It's just kind of built into the kit. You just have to do it. It's a rule. It's somewhere in, in the instructions in League. Trust me. But we're not taking damage, so we're going to go ahead and actually start to get some of the damage items that we can get because it just becomes even more ridiculous. So we're going to start building towards that Brutalizer, which I did say will give you cooldown reduction, which is helpful, and more attack damage. So obviously just all of our abilities are going to hurt and scale better. We can get to a little fight with uh, their ADC and not care. Um, we're Renekton. We're fed. We're ahead. The gold difference right now is actually slightly depressing. It's 11,000. So um, 23 minutes into the game. This game's, uh, as you can tell, is pretty much just over. But... Um, yeah, that's going to happen. Now, I don't know why Tristana would jump there, because obviously our Kha'Zix is going to kill you. And then I can turn and engage. We're going to go ahead and throw the stun down on Karthus. 
Um, this forces them away from us too, which keeps the rest of the team safe. Here comes the ultimate. He's going to kill two people with it this time, but to me it's not dealing that much damage because at this point we do have the Spirit Visage and our boots and the Sunfire Cape fully filled out. We still have our Doran's Shield because it's good and it does give us that health regen. Don't need to get rid of it yet unless we really need the item slot. But next time, um, especially right now when we go back to base, we're going to be able to finish off that damage into the Black Cleaver. And the Black Cleaver is helpful because, like I said, we're going to get cooldown reduction. We're going to get a little bit more health, never a terrible thing. And we're going to get some decent attack damage now. So we really do have a handful of damage, plus that passive on it, um, reducing the enemy's armor, which with teamed up with Slice and Dice is just a, kind of a double whammy when it comes to just shredding through their armor. So you don't need tons of damage because you're already going to just be knocking off any armor that they have. Um, we can go ahead and push ahead of the wave and clear minions and let our minions side of the turret so they do not pick up any gold from that. Although if you just want to push, you just got to kill the tower, and that's all dandy there. And uh, yeah, we're just, you know, doing work as Renekton. He's a, a very strong champion, especially if you get ahead early in game. If you fall behind, I would suggest building Tanky, but he does actually fall off late game. Um, so you do have to be aware of that with Renekton. So... It does help to have a good early game, but luckily his kit kind of just allows him to have a good early game. Here I am finally going to die. It took like four ultimates and all of them. So while they're killing me, my team's going to push bottom lane really, really hard. We're going to pick up a couple objectives, and I believe at this point in the chat you would say worth, which I believe I did because that was worth it. But we can continue with the build because we're back at base. We are going to go ahead and pick up my next favorite part of my build, which of course is more armor and more health, which is going to be on um, that Warden's Mail and a Giant's Belt, which is going to become the Randuin's Omen, which kind of gets things into the super tank levels. We have 3,400 health right now, which is pretty beefy. Our team's getting to a bit of a fight in mid lane. We saw the Fiddlesticks in his hourglass saving himself while ulting. We're going to go ahead and get to the Karthus if we can because we want to kill him because he is probably the most amount of damage on their team besides their awkwardly fed jungler. But we're going to go ahead and pick up a kill on him again and uh, just kind of keep pushing forward with the team. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Renekton's masteries. Those are fun to talk about. Um, we're building fairly tanky. That's just how it works. He's going to be dead again. Anyways, um, what we do with those, we take the 9-21-0 page, 9 in that offensive side. We get a little bit there to help us, but mostly in that defensive uh, page to get you know fairly beefy. This page, I believe I call it my top page if you watched my Masteries videos. Um, you can also see my Masteries pages on my Facebook page if you head over there. They're under photos, so you can check those out as well. And then... Those are your masteries, and you kill people. It's fun. And we're beefy. And you can build more damage, obviously, at this point, too, if you didn't want to get uber tank. But, I mean, if you look at our team, I am the tank. I know we have an Amumu, but Amumu always builds some damage because Amumu scales really well, having half damage. Um, and we're getting to a fight here. Kha'Zix is doing great this game, too. He is going to murder uh, him with one last Q from himself. And, uh, yeah. We have finished the Omen. Now, at this point in the game, this is when that other damage item would come into effect, or if you wanted to get it before the Omen, I'd recommend it. It's great for pushing waves. It's called the Ravenous Hydra. Um, so that is what I could have built earlier, because I'm not worried about the damage, but it's always fun to see how many times you don't die in a game, which right now at 10 and 1 isn't terrible. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and build towards the Ravenous Hydra. And that's... I mean, I hate to sum things up, but that's the build video. If you wanted to go ahead and get a Guardian Angel, it's not a terrible idea. You could come back to life. But late game, like, you don't really do... I don't want to say you don't do anything, but you are there as the meat shield and kind of just a disruptor. You don't have just insane amounts of damage late game. That's why he kind of falls off a little bit. Also, he's cooldown reliant, so it's nice to have some cooldown reduction there. We're chasing after him. We're going to use the Omen just to slow him so he can't really get away. It's not going to matter. He is going to die to Kha'Zix because, well, Kha'Zix has the damage. And uh, that's going to happen. We're going to go ahead, though, and push this towards uh, towards the end of the game. It's going to round out real soon. If you've never played Renekton before, I would highly recommend playing him, especially during a free week, which I believe he's free this week at the time I make this build, right? So he'll still be free for a couple days if you see this video right away. If not, he is a good champion and definitely really fun. There we flash to see if we could KS because it's the end of the game. Nobody cares. We have 44 kills and a 21,000 gold lead. And uh, here comes an ultimate that almost did damage. And uh, yeah, it's Renekton. 
just practice your early lane phase and getting ahead, and that's the key to really just controlling the tempo of the game. Because if you get really far ahead, you can gank other lanes early and tower dive quite easily for your mid laners and do like a, a gank with your jungler, come down from top and do like a three-man gank on mid, guarantee a, a kill, spam your recall some more, it's super fun. And uh, watch your the Karthus go into stasis. But that's going to be a build for Nectin. Like this video and leave a comment. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time. After I move on to the Sigs, because I want to focus him. He is the damage dealer on the enemy team. He has 15 kills. I can solo him easily, though, because the Trinity Force allows me with the damage, and I still have survivability with my items. 